Good morning, church family. Greetings. This is Susan Nossiman. I'm happy to see all of you today, and I hope to bring a short message that uh, hopefully will help us all comfort us during this time of self-isolation. Because I'm not good at spelling or typing, and because Google generates words based on what you begin to type, no matter if you're spelling it correctly or not, I now think of impatience, there's my flower, impatience as the impatient flower. Because when I was looking for information on this flower, I kept getting the word impatient instead of impatience. And so I thought, well, that fits perfectly with how I'm feeling and acting right now because I was impatient. When I was looking for information on the flower, I was impatient after I planted them. I was waiting for it to rain. It was supposed to rain and I was very impatient. And I've also been impatient for weeks. Just that on edge feeling uh, when I'm out there looking for hand sanitizer and Clorox wipes and when I was looking for flour to make banana bread and couldn't find those things, I was impatient. Standing in line to get in Aldi's, impatient. Um, wanting to go visit my mother and my sisters who aren't doing anything except what I'm doing. I'm impatiently waiting for the time I can go see them. I'm wanting to see my brethren at church and give them a hug. I'm waiting sometimes to connect to a Zoom meeting, having technical difficulties, can't play my Zoom game time. It makes me frustrated and impatient. I'm worried and impatient that this stay-at-home order is going to be extended. Frustrated. I've got two weeks or three weeks to figure out how to be more patient all this time, and I haven't figured it out yet. How can I be more patient? How can I be less worried and wait for the Lord's time? When I was thinking about this, that I need to be more patient, I need to be less worried, I remembered the apostles coming to Jesus and asking him, is now the time? Is now the time for the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus' answer was, I don't know the time. You don't know the time. Only God knows the time. And so instead of answering the question with a time, this is when it's going to happen, he gave them a gift of time. He gave them more time with him. Those 40 days, those three years, were time that they could spend learning, preparing, praying for what they wanted to happen. So we've been given that gift of time also. And we need to think about how are we going to use this time that God has given us? How are we going to learn to be more patient? So with my gift of time, I have wasted a lot of it just impatiently anticipating and thinking about what am I going to do when this is over instead of what am I going to do right now to be more patient? When this is over, am I going to, what am I going to do first? Am I going to go to the library or go shopping? Am I going to get a haircut first or get a pedicure first? Am I going to go see people or have them come to my house? What is my first activity instead of what can I do right now? What can my attitude be? Because God not only tells us to be patient and that he has given us a gift of time, he tells us um, what attitude to have. While we're waiting, while we're learning to be patient, God has given us some insight into the attitude we need to have during this time. Um, I'm going to read four verses and uh, then finish with a fifth one. In each of these four verses, I want you to listen to the phrase, Be still. I want you to listen for that phrase, and then we're going to talk about being still. Exodus 14.4 The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. God said that through Moses when the uh, Israelites were wanting to run away from the Egyptians. The Egyptian army was after them and they were scared. He said, you need only to be still. And then he saved them. Psalms 37, 7. 
Be still before the Lord and wait patiently, patiently, sorry, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their evil. Psalms 46.10, he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And Zechariah 2.13, Be still before the Lord, all mankind, because he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. Being still sounds like the opposite of being impatient. We haven't been able to make plans for a very long time. And I had so many things I wanted to do. I had plans for April and May for things that I had never gotten to do before. And I was excited. And I wanted to do those things. And I am still grieving that I don't get to do those things, may never get to go those places and do those things. They may never be rescheduled. And I'm grieving a little bit for those senior, high school seniors who don't get their main event when they expected it. And those people who were planning to get married and got to have 10 people at the wedding. Um, plans have been changed dramatically for everyone. But God doesn't address that. He says, be still and let me take care of things. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. We need to use this gift of time that we have been given not to be impatient, not to fret over what we can't do, but to embrace what we can do. We need to embrace the time for prayer, the time for reconnection, the time for rest that God has given us. Let's think of it in that way. Yes, it's a horrible time for many sick people and dying people, but use this time that God, this gift that God has given you. And let's finish with Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 20. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Have you ever known a time in your life when the entire world was focused on one thing? One thing was on everyone's mind and the world has come to a stop in many places. Let's be silent before God. Let's use this time to focus on him. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see everyone. Thank you.